one up there. Today we're going to Pembroke Castle. It has a decent amount of history and some major names that have a lot to do with this castle. So let's check it out. There has been some sort of structure on this place for almost a thousand years. Even the Romans recognized the importance of this place. There's been some great names attached to what's currently Pembroke Castle, such as Strongbow, William Marshall, and Henry VII. We just wrapped up a tour with one of the tour guides here. They're free uh, for at least us here today. They're doing three a day and they don't cost anything extra. You can just jump in and out when you so please. We learned tons of things that we could talk four hours about, uh, but we are going to spare you <laughs> our ramblings and go explore for the couple of hours more that we have here. I think we're going to start in William Marshall's area. Usually we kind of try to do like a clockwise or counterclockwise and so we make sure we don't miss anything, but instead we're going to start in the oldest part of the stone castle that William Marshall built when he was here. That's the part that Billy's most excited about as well, so we're going to check that out for also some people just got married over there. So exciting! tour that we did when we first got here we learned that there was one prisoner held in the Obliette here his name was John Whithorn and he was in the dungeon area for seven years before finally being released he went completely blind while he was in there there is no light uh, you're just in a hole under the building um, and apparently 
he was just thrown in there because he made uh, a very powerful person very angry. And then he didn't get out until the other guy died. And then all of his friends wrote a bunch of letters like, hey, can you let our innocent friend out of the dungeon, please? This is the great hall that would have been lived in by William Marshall and his family probably while they were actually building the bigger tower right outside. Wogan's Cavern. It's underneath the hall that we were just in. It has been used since Bronze Age as a, a refuge. They've found tons of uh, Bronze Age artifacts in here. They found Roman coins in here. When the castle was built, they used it as cold storage. I knew it was down here. I didn't expect it to be this big. It's huge. There's a pigeon battle happening above us right now. But we just wanted to mention. Anyways, we just wanted to mention uh, that when they started using uh, this place for the cold storage in the castle above, when they were really settling here with the castle they walled in the entrance to the cave here and they put in a stairway for access behind me is going to be william marshall's gatehouse um, everything that's on this side was not built by him but from here to that big structure behind me. This was all built by him. This would have been a horseshoe type gatehouse. Uh, the path here would actually be the entrance to the gatehouse and it would have been built up very tall to protect from sieges. This is an illustration of what the gatehouse would have looked like. prison tower now, not to be confused with the dungeon area where we were earlier. Behind this plexiglass is a medieval toilet, and it is said that the wood still, usually there's no wood left on them, but this one still has the wood, and apparently it is very, 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 very old. Just across the hall from the medieval loo is the prison room, 
And behind this plexiglass is medieval, what is the word I'm looking for? Graffiti from when prisoners were in here when they were actually using the tower. This tower right here is where they say Henry VII was born. Most likely he was born on in a house that is actually in the field behind me as well because um, his uncle would have built that house and they know it's there because it had some site digging and they found it before, had to build that house to live in because everything here by that time period may have been a little crumbly. So they say he was born in this tower. He was probably born in the house his uncle built in the middle of the field. That thing down there they're apparently going to put a statue of William Marshall, who is one of my favorite medieval knights, if not the best medieval knight ever. Um, they're doing it soon. I believe she said May 7th, which is unfortunate because we're going to be just about to leave the country then, but it's going to be pretty cool, I imagine. I've got to give a shout out to Lydia because she has a splitting headache and does not feel well, but she's hanging in there for me, which is great because I'm the worst person to be at a castle with and not feel well because I want to see everything. But she's hanging in there like a boss, so we're almost done. Also, I'm on a little out tower. You should see the space that you have to walk through to get here because there would be, keep in mind, there'd be no guard railing. There is a lovely cafe here at the castle. Uh, they have hot sandwiches and cold sandwiches and hot drinks and cold drinks um, and ice cream, which I think I'm gonna get some in a minute. We're gonna eat lunch here and then uh, head on to our next destination because we still have more to do today.
is another great castle in the books. Pembroke Castle is definitely up there on one of my favorite things, just mainly because this is where William Marshall uh, had a lot of his stuff going on, so that was really cool. The other thing that's unique about this castle is the cave underneath mm -hmm. it. I, don't, I can't think of any other castle that we've been to that has a cave. Oh, so cool. So, so cool. <laughs> what are we doing now? Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap out the vlog here before it gets too long because for the rest of the day we're headed down to St. Govan's Chapel and a couple of other um, natural wonders, I guess you could call them, along the coastline near there. So headed a little farther south, I think. Let's go.